All right, I think we will go ahead and get started. So welcome everybody to um, our American Farm Bureau Foundation webinar. So we are uh, just real quick, let's cover some logistics about how to navigate Zoom. Um, so if you've never used Zoom before, um, when you logged in with the meeting link, you were given the option to join audio uh, via conference through the computer. So um, if you're com connected, uh, if your audio is connected through the computer, that's how you did that. But you can also connect via um, phone, so you can call in as well. Um, and then, so let's just make sure everyone has their, their audio hooked up. And if you don't, um, let me know by sending us a chat. So um, in this <clears throat> bottom area of the screen, there's a little chat bubble. Um, and just if you have any questions, if you're having trouble with audio, um, we'll use that chat feature to communicate with each other. So everybody should be automatically muted. Um, and, and when you are sending a chat, just make sure that you select um, whether you want to send it to, to everyone or to, to all panelists, um, just to make sure that we can all see your comments. Um, and then just so you know, this webinar will be recorded. So I um, uh, just, just want to let you know that I will be saving this webinar and putting it up on our website for those folks who couldn't join us today. So with that, um, let's, let's get started. Um, so my, my name is Leah Gibson. I work with the American Farm Bureau Foundation for Agriculture. Um, and um, I live in a cattle ranch in Idaho. Um, I work virtually. And um, we also have um, one other person or two other people technically from our, from our team with us today. We have Julia Recco. And then we also have um, Pete Nice who's joining us as well. So um, if, if I'm talking and I miss your chat, um, they'll, they'll help us um, work through that. Let's see, I see I have a chat right here. Great, Ryan's testing that out. Um, yeah, and so you'll want to, you have the option to do all panelists or all panelists and attendees, and we'll want to do all panelists and attendees so that uh, everybody can see what you're sending us. Great, so let's see who's on the call today. Um, Let's go ahead and use, test out that chat feature and give us your first name, um, your affiliation, so what organization you're with, um, whether it's a farm bureau or you work for an ag company or maybe you're a teacher, um, and then put in your state as well. Let's go ahead and do that now. Welcome, Val. You can see we have Heather and Laura from Delaware Farm Bureau, Jane from Nebraska Farm Bureau, hi Dan, lots of Farm Bureau folks, Sherry from Virginia Extension, Brenda from Ag in the Classroom, IO Ag in the Classroom, Hi, Diane. See Ryan, he's a student at Texas and A&M, welcome. Julian Shelby from IO Ag in the Classroom. Oh great, Lisa with Michigan State University in the 4-H program. We have a big group today. Lots of Ag in the Classroom, Farm Bureau folks. Great, welcome Sandra from Savannah Farm to School. Awesome, I think that's just about everybody. Um, so yeah, if you're curious about who's on this call with us, just scroll through the chat and you'll be able to see who, who has joined us from all across the country today. Such a great turnout. Thanks everybody for joining. Um, and so today we'll just be having some, 
some conversations via the chat. Um, I may unmute you if we have the opportunity to um, as, we, as we go through this outreach webinar. So um, this workshop is, is all about um, a bigger picture um, and whether you've completed all of the requirements to be a part of the foundation outreach team um, or you are just now diving in, this is a place for collaboration and exploration. Um, if you're one of those that are just diving in on the screen, you'll see, um, you'll see a few reasons why uh, becoming part of the foundation outreach team is so important. So there's, you'll get advanced notification of any resources that the foundation um, puts out. Um, we'll reach out to you for speaking opportunities. Um, if we have events coming up that are near you, or if we have anything happening in DC or at the Farm Bureau Annual Convention, we'll reach out to you for speaking opportunities. Um, we'll also have um, uh, invitations that we'll send to you for special events and then we'll also lean on you to help us pilot any new programs so um, a lot of our programs are um, we like to have them tested by folks that are actually in the field like you so um, but we need people to pilot them so we would reach out to our outreach folks to help us get that done let's see I see people are raising their hand um, Nicole I see you just raised your hand um, so if you could just, if you have a question, if you could put it in the chat function, um, that would be great. And I'll, we'll keep an eye on that. Great. And then to, um, to complete the, 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 um, whoops, it's going too fast. To complete, um, to join the outreach team and complete all your requirements. Um, you'll have to do the following. So you'll complete two online modules on Farm Bureau University, Planning with the Pillars 1 and Planning with the Pillars 2. Um, great, Lisa, I'm, ask, I'm answering your question right now. How does one join the outreach team? So um, you'll, you complete these two uh, short courses, these online courses via Farm Bureau University. And if you are new to Farm Bureau University, you don't know what that is, you're not in the system, email foundation at fb.org for login information and we'll get you set up. Um, and then you also need to um, complete one classroom fair or, or event presentation using American Farm Bureau Foundation materials and then complete a short reflection survey. Um, and then last but not least, um, you would complete a culminating workshop. So that is um, essentially what this is. This is our virtual culminating workshop um, um, for, for all of you folks. Great. And um, so where are we headed? By the end of our time together, you will be able to um, know what the pillars are. Um, and when you're talking about ag literacy and, and use them so that you can save time and energy whenever you're doing ag literacy efforts. Um, and then you'll, uh, last but not least, be able to select the right tool for the job. So we have a lot of resources that are available for each of you, and most of them are free, which is great. Um, but if um, when you're faced with a new ag literacy opportunity, um, it's really great if you can efficiently sift through tools and choose one to um, that's right for the job. So that's what we'll be covering today. And again, if you have any questions as we go along, just send us a chat and we'll, um, we'll talk through your question. So, um, and just so you know, anytime we see this little green pencil, um, this is just a, your visual clue to get ready to capture some ideas. Um, or, or to send some messages in the chat box. So um, it'll probably be helpful if you have um, either a Word doc op open to capture some ideas or just, just get a piece of paper and pencil so that um, you can take some notes. Great, so let's start by um, discovering the pillars. Um, so um, the, the pillars are 
a resource that the Farm Bureau Foundation um, developed to, to help people like each of you on this call to talk about agriculture literacy in a, an organized fashion. So um, how many of us, you can um, either raise your hand or put a chat in the chat box. How many of us are familiar with the pillars or have used them before? Okay, great. About seven of us raised our hand. So awesome. So some of us are familiar with them. So, but those who aren't, which is the majority of us, these pillars were written from an agriculture industry perspective. Um, so what are the best practices and key messages that should be communicated through ag literacy? Um, and the, the pillars are organized in ways that agriculture intersects with life, and then it's organized by cognitive level via age. So um, this is what, this is the, the, the cover of the pillars. So you can see this is how they're organized, relationship between ag and the environment, ag, food, fiber, and energy, ag and animals, ag and lifestyle, ag and technology, and ag and the economy. Okay, so some of us, great. Thanks for those chat messages. Um, so this, these are the, it's the foundational knowledge when we're doing events or we're having, um, you know, FFA students come to our, come to Bayer Crop Science, we're thinking about, these are the, this is the foundational knowledge that we want students to, to, to leave that experience or event with. Um, and, um, we, so let's practice using these pillars. Um, so it'd be great if, because we are connected to the internet, if each of you um, could pull up a copy of your own. So um, if you could go to www.agfoundation.org slash resources slash ag pillars. And then just um, download, download that pillar document. I can put it in the put it in the chat as well. Dot org slash resources slash ag pillars. And then just let me know when you when you have that pulled up. Great, looks like we're all getting it, getting it up. So as we're doing that, uh, what we'll do next with, with that pillar document, as, and as you're opening the pillar document, you'll see it where it's broken down into each of the grade levels. So what we'll do first is try using this tool. So um, think about resources and events that you're currently involved in. So something that you already do, whether it's um, an ag in the classroom conference that you attend, uh, again, like hosting 4-H or FFA members um, at your headquarters. Um, it could be some type of farm to school event. So think of something that you already do and then use this reflection tool that's on this screen that's being shared right now. Um, to better identify where you should spend your time in the future. So we have an example here. So say you, um, your activity that you do is you have ag books for a school library. And the next question is, when are they presented or developed? 
you, we present them once a year for the past five years. And what are the results? The librarian appreciates the books and, um, and the kids like them as well. And then when we look at the pillars, let's think about the relationship to pillars of, and ag literacy. And so we think this, is, um, this just falls into the foundational knowledge category. Um, and then our target audience is K through six and our method of engagement is simply sharing materials. So we just donate the books to them and they, um, they read the books on their own. So this will help us categorize what we already do into these little buckets. And let's spend about four minutes doing that. Um, try to come up with, um, with at least two events or activities that you already do or materials that you already produce. Categorize them in this way, either on your Word doc or on a piece of paper, and then we'll have some people share. Take about two more minutes to think through some activities or path materials that we already develop and categorize them through this planning review worksheet. And for those that are just joining us, if you look in the chat box, I'll repost the link. We are looking at this right here, the pillars document. You can download that and follow along. And as you get finished, go ahead and post, um, post a summary of an activity or material that you already develop in the chat box. Let's see, Robin, you read iBooks to classrooms and have field trips slash farm tours. And Sandra hosts a, has a farm to school month in October, which is happening right now. And let's remember to share to all panelists and attendees so that everybody can see what you're sharing. See, so Lisa has junior master gardeners it's in the ag food and fiber and energy category where you and you create gardens at schools. That's great. Michelle has a mobile science lab for K through five students. See garden classes, uh, reading to classrooms through Ag in the Classroom. Also involved with direct to consumer outreach. Thanks, Jenny. 
Okay, great. So you can see how this tool can be used to, to think about what you, you already do. So next, um, we are um, going to learn about some of the resources that the, the foundation offers, and then we'll revisit the pillars tool and think about how we could use, th use these new resources that we've just learned about in future events. Um, and or to fill any gaps that we might have identified when we were looking at that pillars document. So if you would like to um, look at these websites either um, after me, after this webinar, um, or as we go along, these are the websites we'll be doing. So I'll just put them in the chat function or chat box real quick. So agfoundation.org. AmericanFarm.org and PurplePlow.org. Those are the websites we'll be using. So I will first start with um, uh, AgFoundation.org. So that is us. That's the American Farm Bureau Foundation for Agriculture. And what is it? It's the main hub for the foundation. So that is um, where you'll find all of our resources, any current projects or events, and it's also um, where you'll find all our stores. So I will pull up, this is what our website looks like, agfoundation.org. Um, you, you can see here in the top, top of the page, middle of the page, there's, that's our store. So if you click on that, that's where you can get any of our resources that are for purchase. Um, and then we also just show any of our recent news on this homepage here. So any new resources or grants that we're offering, you can find them there. If you hover over this resource tab, um, this is how we categorize some of our main resources that we offer. And then you can also sign up for an email newsletter at the very top. We send out newsletters periodically. Um, a couple times a month uh, just to keep you up to date on what's new with us. Oh, sharing is paused. Resume share. Thank you for saying something. Let me try new share. Okay, can you see my screen now? Yes, great. So this is the website I was referring to. This is what it looks like. Um, stores at the top, email signups at the top, um, all of the goodies, the resources, projects, grants um, are all in this top banner and you can find them there. Awesome. So now um, we can go back to this and I'm going to have to reshare. Great. Um, so Nicole asked by signing up for this webinar, are we signed up for the emails or should we do it again? Um, by signing up for this, we definitely have your contact and I'm pretty sure we sign you up for emails. Um, I'm not 100% positive, but I'm pretty sure um, that's, how, that's how it works. That's how we get you. Um, but if you don't, uh, you could always try Nicole signing up um, after this, um, and it, you, it won't be duplicated. You won't receive two emails. You'll just be in the system for sure. So our next platform is, uh, is My American Farm. My American Farm is an online gaming platform and there are lessons and resources for pre-K through fifth grade. Um, and there are 24, or there's actually 25 games now. And um, there's resources for the classroom, resources for fairs and events, and um, also resources for when you're just spending time with your family. So let's, um, whoops. Moving too quickly here. Um, let's check out my American farm real quick.
So this is My American Farm. Uh, it's a free platform, so everything on here is free, except for these really neat uh, barn uh, and event banners that we created that are about 10 by 15. And you can either download those for free or you can purchase a printed uh, physical banner. And that's really the only thing that costs money. But if you click on classroom, you can see there's lesson plans, activity sheets, games, e-comics, and books and videos. So let's go to games. So all of the lesson plans, activity sheets, everything is based around these games. Um, and they're categorized by uh, their subject matter content and their grade level. Um, so AgriCross America and Auction Adventures are two of our newest games that we've recently um, come out with. AgriCross America actually has an app that you can download. Um, and there's also a My American Farm app that you can download that's free as well that has about six of these games on there. So, but the, the main resource is this website version. Um, and uh, another great, uh, a good resource to keep in mind, if we go to classroom, um, if you scroll all the way down um, and you find agriculture employee resources, if you click on that, uh, this will take you to a, a page that had some, has had some good updates recently. There's a volunteer guide um, for pre-K through 12th grade. So if you're going to spend time with pre-K through 12th grade students and you want to talk to them about your job in agriculture and talk to them about the many different career students can find themselves within the ag industry, this would be a good tool for you to use. Uh, there is a, a PDF that has classroom version and then large group assembly uh, lesson outlines. And then there's a PowerPoint that you can download for, for free that goes along with your lesson. There's a video demonstrating what that might look like to use this resource. There are printable e-readers. There are uh, My Little Ag Me career books that you can download. Um, and then there's a augmented reality experience connected with it. And even an introduction letter template that you can send to schools or librarians or anybody that you're visiting to to share that, share with them what you would want to go talk to them about. So this is a good new tool that we created, particularly for ag employees to get out into their community and do some outreach. Questions about My American Farm? Okay. See none, we will proceed. Okay, so our last major platform is Purple Plow. Purple Plow is for grades five through 12, so our middle school, high school age group, whereas My American Farm was uh, pre-K and elementary. So Purple Plow has these, it's a, it's a free STEM education platform that has STEM challenges um, on the website. So there are these bigger Purple Plow challenges is what we call them that take, uh, they're a semester long challenge. So they'll run January 1, starting next year, they'll run January 1 to May 15th and then August 1 to December 15th. They don't necessarily take that long to complete, but we give, um, we give folks, 4-H groups, classrooms, that amount of time to complete that larger challenge. And then there's also Purple Plow Puzzlers, and these are smaller STEM activities that can be completed in one to three hours. And they're for, again, the middle school through high school age group. Um, and, uh, this is a great, this is, could be a great thing to, uh, to use if you're looking to partner for a longer term uh, commitment with somebody in your community. Maybe it's a, a, a sixth grade classroom. You want to go visit them every Thursday and you can work on the Purple Plow Challenge 
or uh, the puzzlers are great to use if you want to just go in and do something once with students um, or if you're having an event as well. So I'll pull up Purple Plow, the website. Um, and then just make sure that I'm sharing the screen. Awesome. So this is the Purple Plow website. It will look a little differently by the end of the year. We're working on updating this website. But um, you, can, you can see here, we have the explanation of what Purple Plow is in case you forget or want to share it with somebody. Um, and then there's also this great explainer video that just shows what, what Purple Plow is and how it can be used. So these challenges, if we click on the challenge tab, so the current challenge um, is the cattle ranch riddle. So um, students have to, there's a little explainer video there with each of the challenges and um, students have to construct a model of a cattle ranch that addresses um, the concerns of maintaining a profitable business and at the same time being stewards of natural resources. Um, so they'll work with the team to come up with some type of model, whether that's a physical one, whether it's something that they build um, online. Um, and then there's just some success requirements um, noted below. There's a free facilitator guide. Um, there's a free student guide that you can hand out to the students that has worksheets for them. There's a lesson packet that has uh, you know, introduction to beef production, introduction to um, land management, um, and uh, like introduction to beef nutrition, I think is one of the lessons. So just some of the basic things. If you know somebody or if you're a teacher that doesn't know much about beef production or agriculture in general, these will cover your bases, your foundational knowledge that you need to know. And if, um, if, if students compete in this these uh, these seasonal challenges, purple plow challenges, the the 4-H group or the classroom can win a um, a 3D printer and then a hundred dollar Visa gift card, and then the students will receive. We have these fun purple plow socks and uh, little medals that they'll get as well. So that's what they'll get if they compete in the challenge. So it is an actual contest. And then the, the puzzlers are um, these, these shorter activities. And again, these are, being, uh, these are all being updated. So it'll look a little differently um, by the end of the year. But you can see this one is Mason Bee Hotel. Um, there's a little explanation there about the background of Mason Bees. And students um, uh, work together to create a hotel for Mason Bees. Um, and these new puzzlers will have a little bit more background information um, and a little bit more directions in these steps so that um, if you're uncomfortable teaching about mason bees, for example, um, you'll have a little bit more cushion provided for you. What questions are there about Purple Plow? Okay, great. So, of course, um, all of you are, are, relate, are involved in education in some way, and so you know um, that it's, it's the most powerful weapon we can use to change the world um, for good. Uh, Oh, and let's see, we have a quick question um, about Purple Plow. They need to sign up by November 1st to start the program after January 1, correct? Um, no, so um, the cattle ranch riddle that's happening right now, um, that challenge opened, it was live. The, we put it on the website um, on August, fir on August 1st. Um, and so then it'll close um, uh, by uh, by November and so you'll just need to have everything submitted by then um, but next year when the challenge opens on January 1 um, you can start at whatever time you would like you just have to submit your entry for that challenge by May 15th
Okay. So let's think about how we can um, use education and ag literacy to change some folks' lives. Um, using uh, these, the pillars. So we we'll use our strategic planning worksheet to, to think more about um, some resources we could use to, um, to, to implement into some, some new events. Um, but first, we just want to quickly cover some other new resources that you can use um, at, at your events or in your outreach activities. So the auction ventures game I mentioned earlier is a new resource. Um, this is um, for third through fifth grade. Um, it was, um, we worked with the National Auctioneers Association to come up with the content to make sure that it was um, very um, accurate and relevant to that industry. Um, and it's all about math. And so there's these quick math questions um, that students go through to learn about auctioneering and then just practice their um, basic math skills. And that can be found on my American farm under games. Another new resource is Food and Farm Facts Junior. So um, about every two years, uh, the Farm Bureau Foundation creates the Food and Farm Facts, and that is mostly for high school audience. We take data from the USDA and we compile it into this pretty book that has a bunch of fun ag facts. And then we also have some um, suggested lessons that teachers can use or um, educators can, can use when they're doing any type of outreach events. Um, but we recently, actually just today, um, um, showed our, or um, released our Food and Farm Facts Junior. So this is a, a booklet that covers um, essentially basic uh, myths and truths about agriculture. So does chocolate milk come from brown cows? And what's the difference between wool and cotton? Um, simple things like that that um, can be uh, misunderstood at a young age, and, um, but are fun to talk about. Uh, with younger students. So that's available today, hot off the press. Um, you can go to agfoundation.org and then click on store at the top to get that downloaded or purchased. And I forget how much it is, I'm sorry, it just came out today. Um, but it's um, very, very affordable because we just, we just charge you what it cost us to, um, to produce it because we are a nonprofit. Uh, we also recently updated our Ag in the Environment lessons. So these are for middle school students. Um, if you're ever wanting to go into, the, into a classroom or to a group of middle school students talk about agriculture and the environment, um, you can get these as well via the store. Um, and then another, another new resources are My Little Ag Me um, game resources. So My Little Ag Me is a game about ag careers um, that, um, and this, uh, this little PDF that is to the right of this My Little Ag Me um, game icon is a screenshot of what that volunteer guide looks like that I was talking about. Um, and these are the books um, in the middle. These are the examples of the printable books. They're shorter chapter books um, that we wrote and they're, they're super fun. Um, so I suggest you, you check those out. You can just print them from home. And then there's also some um, ag career videos as well that are newly available on the website. So before we um, get too far, um, let's go back to, um, to that pillars resource and think about um, the, the tools that we learned about today and how we could um, how we could use them in a new ac event that's coming up or um, um, a new activity that we'd like to try with someone in our community. So thinking back to those resources that we explored and using this, um, this pillar worksheet, let's think through and then send us in the chat um, some ideas that you have.
So what is a Farm Bureau Foundation resource that you think you could use in an event coming up or um, a new resource that you'd like to, to create and you can use a Farm Bureau Foundation tool to help you do that. Mm, that's a great idea. Um, I think it's Diane said that she does a lot of um, substitute teaching for K through fifth grade and um, that she could use these resources as an alternative to kids watching videos during their milk and snack time. That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Justine said she just held a careers in ag workshop yesterday for teachers and um, can use these my little Agni printable books as an extended learning resource for K through fifth grade. Yes. And Nicole's thinking about sharing Purple Plow with ag teachers. Yes. And we will be at the National FFA convention giving a workshop to teachers there about Purple Plow. So um, we recently expanded Purple Plow to high school. It was originally just middle school, but we recently expanded it. So we're excited to get that, um, reach into that other pool of teachers. Yeah, collaborate with the library to do after school Purple Plow social media posts. Um, we, um, we've had some after school groups and library groups do Purple Plow. So that's a great fit. And the junior cards could be a resource. Yes, exactly. So um, I think it's Tokach. I feel like I'm totally butchering your name, but uh, you said you're looking for a one page coloring page for K through 12 or K through second students to complete and hand out at your Ag Day event in March. We have a, on My American Farm, there is a printable coloring page book that's free that you can download and if you can't find it um send us an email and we will um we'll point that out for you and make sure that you're all set up mm -hmm. friendly competition between regional 4-h clubs is how you could use purple plow exactly Great, these are awesome ideas. I love, uh, I love these ideas. Are there any questions um, of, is there something that you're, you're still looking for that you are wondering if the foundation can, uh, has any tools that can meet that need? Or do you need to, do you have any clarifying questions? Okay, great. Uh, well, wow, uh, we, um, okay, let's see. Emily said, is there a list of all the resources anywhere? Or do we just look around in the different sites? Yes, so for the most part, um, all of the resources um, are not listed somewhere <laughs> in particular, but we are working on that, so that is, um, that is one of our, uh, our big goals for 2019 is to um, create some type of a volunteer landing page that can be used um, for folks like all of you when you're looking for resources. Um, but at the moment, you know, you just have to go um, site to site. But if you are, if you're ever confused or lost, just send us an email. You can, um, you can contact me at education director at fb.org and I'd be happy to um, to if you just say hey I'm meeting with third grade students um, we're going to be outside and we want to talk about um, plant science um, we can help find you a resource
Hmm. Ellen said she's looking for information about food distribution around the world for 11th through 12th grade. Hmm. We have, I think our, um, Ellen, our, our high school sustainable agriculture lessons has some, um, some information on there about, um, about, uh, it's, not so much exports or imports, but it's a, a world hunger based lesson. And so there's a lot of um, digging into food that's consumed and produced in different parts of the world. So I'd suggest that our high school sustainable agriculture lessons or look at the food and farm facts. There are resources in there about exports and imports around the world. Great. Any other last questions or thoughts? Is there a career test that can be used for elementary? I know FFA has one but that's more for high school. Hmm, we, we do not have um, a career test specifically, but we did work with, um, with FFA to create um, a different resource um, about ag careers. Um, let's see, Ag Foundation. Ag careers. Um, and there are um, there are these, there's a free lesson plan or educational guide for middle school. Um, but it could probably be used for elementary school. It's called When I Grew Up, Discover Ag Careers. And so we use the nine career areas that are in um, that FFA identifies. Um, and then there's also um, a name that ag career game. So students, it's kind of like taboo. So students can, um, uh, they'll, they'll, they work with a partner and there are hush words that they can't say. And then there's a career that they're trying to guess like microbiologist, um, you know, ag lobbyist. Um, and uh, there are, yeah, so you can buy that game on our, on our website and then there's also ag career posters. We do not have an ag career test, um, but they could try out that um, My Little Ag Me career game and you can have a discussion about ag careers from that. Yes. Sandra, I think all of what I just shared too could apply to your, um, your, your career day for at-risk middle school students. And all, uh, most of those resources are free. Like these cards cost money and these posters, but the lessons themselves are all free. Wonderful. Okay. Well, um, if there are no other questions, um, thank you all so much for um, taking the time to get on this webinar today um, during your lunch hour, most likely. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, if you have any other questions that come up um, later today or as you dig into more events, just shoot me an email, education director at fb.org. I'd be um, happy to help you out. Um, but other than that, thanks so much for joining and have a wonderful day. And we look forward to seeing you all out in the field using Farm Bureau Foundation resources. Thank you.